Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today, well, not this puzzle, this is yesterday's puzzle, which I'm just gonna revisit for a couple of reasons that arose um, in the comments and, and thinking about it. And um, several people early on, especially, commented that they'd done the puzzle in 20 minutes or less, and they didn't really understand why it had taken me so long, about 45, I think. But, uh, and then some, some other commenters were a bit upset that they were struggling so badly when some people had done it in 15 or 18 minutes. Um, and there's, there's another comment that I'll mention in a moment, which was very important. But I think what might have happened and I am in no way throwing accusations, I'm in no way a person who can. I think, and I got this impression from a couple of the comments, that a lot of people didn't notice that this could be a seven at this point in this circle. For that to be a seven, this has to be a double three and that a one. Um, and if you don't notice the double three possibility, which is a bit unusual on a seven arrow, a, set, a three cell seven arrow is so often one, two, four, that it's quite hard to spot this alternative possibility. And I think people just filled in a nine here, then the seven here gave them a one, two, four here, and that gives you a six, eight pair there. That makes this a two, that sorts out this arrow. It gets quite a lot easier from there. Um, whereas it took me quite a long time in the puzzle to disambiguate those two. However, I think what I could have done relatively uh no it's a little bit it's a little bit after this so i then found out i think that these couldn't be twos because of a wonderful move on this diagonal where twos couldn't fit if you put twos there this ends up being a one so that's a two and suddenly there's nowhere on the negative diagonal for twos so those can't be twos and turn out therefore to be ones and we get this three here and um, we also, I think during this process, oh, that then knocks out ones on the negative diagonal instead, which is absolutely fabulous. And this becomes a one on the negative diagonal. I mean, that's a really nice move within the puzzle. Um, what I should have noticed at this point, uh, oh, that becomes a four, yeah. Okay, so the possibility of this being a five has very interesting ramifications because that makes this a nine, which makes this a seven. Now suddenly in box five, if that's a seven, remember this now does have to be a one, two, four, triple, three will have to go there, but this five is gonna need a three in the same column. So that doesn't work. So I should have been able at this point to get that as a three. This is a one, two pair. And then I think the solve proceeds relatively smoothly and maybe that's what the people doing the 20 minutes were, were achieving um, and my apologies if so I don't want to accuse anybody and I you know I wasn't accusing you I was accusing the other people who did it quickly um, but the other comment that was quite interesting was that Walking Writer wrote to tell me that in his original submission there was a black dot between these cells which might have made things an awful lot easier um, I don't know if our tester solved it with that black dot and left it out or solved it without um, and recommended it anyway. I mean, I'm, I don't know, but I'm not even going to ask. There, said it. So that was yesterday. Today is going to be this puzzle. And look, I loaded this up a minute ago. And I don't think I appreciated what's going on here. This is extraordinary. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. I do want to very quickly advertise the Crack and the Cryptic Sudoku Hunt on Patreon. Please have a go at it. It is getting remarkably good reviews. Six puzzles of varying difficulties um, and then a little meta that people are having fun with as well. So do get an answer in by the 20th. That's the deadline. Um, and very well done to all of those people who have hundreds of them, hundreds of them coming in every day in, in their many dozens. Um, fantastic. Well done, guys. Now, that's on Patreon where we put lots of extra stuff. There's also, of course, our apps where there is so much extra content and so many brilliant puzzles. Do check those out along with Sven's Sudoku Pad where you can play all of this good stuff. And 
the Discord server, our merchandise, all on the links under the video. But the first link is to this puzzle. And unbelievably, this is a debut, I think, on the channel by Joe Bo. Apologies if not, I've got that wrong before. Um, and he's called it Anti-Ratio Miracle, which you may think is a tad hubristic. I don't think it is. In the original Miracle Sudoku puzzle, there was a one and a two. This is Mitchell Lee's, obviously. There was a one and a two and a very constraining rule set. Now, here we have a one and a two and a four and a pretty constraining rule set. But like in the original Miracle, it's very... Okay, I was going to say very simply stated. It is if you know about entropic and modular restrictions. But I'll go through the rules, and I don't think it's that complicated. And I'm fascinated that this puzzle solves. Actually, I'm fascinated that given the rule set, a grid exists that can be solved. But you'll see what I mean in a moment, perhaps. So, the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so we're putting one to nine in every row, column, and every three by three box. Any two orthogonally adjacent cells, so that's horizontally adjacent, or, oops, horizontally adjacent, or vertically adjacent, cannot contain digits in a one to two, one to three, one to four, or one to five ratio. So no pair of these digits could include 1, 2, or 1, 3, or indeed 2, 6, which has a 1 to 3 relationship, or I suppose 3, 9 has a 1 to 3 relationship. So you just can't have, you couldn't have 2, 8, because that's 1 to 4. How are there enough neighbours left to fill a Sudoku puzzle, a Latin square? I'm a bit confused by that. That seems impossible, but it's been done, so we'll see. Now... There are more rules to help us solve this, this miracle. Every horizontal set of three orthogonally connected cells within any three by three box. So this is all of these strips. All of these three cell strips confined within a box horizontally, and I suppose there's 27 of them in the puzzle, must contain one digit from 147, one digit from 258, and one digit from 369. Those are the three uh, sets of I was going to say sets of modulo three digits, but they're the three sets of digits that leave different remainders when you divide an integer by three. That's the non-mathematical way of saying it, because I'm probably getting it wrong mathematically. The really simple way of seeing it is if you look at your numeric keypad, your three by three grid, you can look at 147 on the left, 258 up the middle, 369 on the right, and each of these strips has one of those. Now, we're not finished. Every vertical set of three orthogonally connected cells, so again, there are 27 of these in the puzzle, must contain one low digit from 1, 2, 3, one mid medium digit from 4, 5, 6, and one high digit from 7, 8, 9. And those are what we call an entropic triples. Um, and you can visualize those by slicing the keypad horizontally. Um, oh, there's one more rule. <laughs> There are no threes in a corner of the grid, which makes this not just an anti-ratio puzzle, but an anti-party puzzle, probably. Well, we won't get the party celebration if we do it right. That's the answer. Anyway, what a fascinating rule set. What a brilliant idea by Jobo. No, I'm going to, no, no. Maybe not the idea and the rule set. What an incredible construction to achieve it with this anti-ratio rule. Um, and computers may have been involved, and that's fine when you're constructing. But we are going to try a human solve, because that's what we believe people like watching, weirdly. And I'm going to restart my clock and say, let's get cracking now. So, how on earth do we start this monstrosity of a rule set? No, it's not. It's, it's just terrifying. Right, one can't be next to a two, three, four, or five. So... Well, actually, that's a really interesting point. In this puzzle, not only is that one surrounded by pretty high digits, but every one in the puzzle must be. So they've got to be hidden away a bit to avoid contact with twos, threes, fours, and fives. What about the two? Actually, that is very constrained too. That can't be next to one or any of the even digits because they would have a ratio of one to two, three, or four. Yeah, so that's got to be next to 3, 5, 7, or 9. 
four, I suppose, those digits are possible. There must be another one. Six is also possible to go next to four. Oh, this is just weird. What am I meant to do now? I meant to use the entropic and modular rules. So let's look at this set. There's one from 147, and that's a one. Right, so there can't be a seven in that group. Oh, okay, the restriction is not so much that there is one from each set, it's that there's no more than one from each set, in a way. So six or nine is one of the other digits here, and eight must be the digit from the 258 set. So one of those is an eight, and that means this can't be an eight. And is that all it means? Probably is. I don't know. That, that. Okay, let's look at this then. We've got a 2 from the 258 set. So that can't be a 5. Up here, we've got a 4. Now, this is from the middly, middly digits. So that can't be 5 or 6. But along here, it's the modular sequence so that can't be a seven this is not wildly helpful what about this we've got a low ah hang on there must be a one in this row somewhere and that must be next to a middly digit and that digit must be a six because one's not allowed to be next to four or five. That's an interesting thought. Do anything with that? Not really. Oh, look, two by Sudoku is in one of these cells. Ah, right, that also puts two in one of those. Oh, okay, right, now, what I've just seen is that this can't be a six, and this is very neat because if that was a six, it would either form a pair, a domino with two here, and that's illegal because of the one to three ban on ratios, or it would form a six, two pair there. So that can't be six. Now what's this doing? Okay, that's done something for this triple. It's got the high digit there, so this needs to be middly. Now in this row, this is something else I've just seen, that has the 2 from 258, that group has the 8, so this group has the 5. I have a feeling we're going to get a lot of roping in this puzzle, which is where you get kind of sets of 3 forming across rows. We'll, we'll see. Anyway, I don't know, it's just a guess. That can't be 5 now. In fact, the 2 is the 258 digit there, the 5 is the 258 digit there, this must be an 8. It must be a five up here, so there's no twos or eights. Five is going to appear somewhere there. Eight is going to appear somewhere there. And that's interesting pencil marking. Not afraid today to mark three cells with pencil marks. I think I'll be doing it a lot, probably, based on this. Now, wherever two is here, what's it going to be above? Not six or eight. It's just not allowed to be because of the one to three and one to four bands. So it's above nine. One of these is a two nine pair. Oh, so nine has to be in one of these cells along with eight, yes. So that is an eight nine pair. That can't be nine anymore. One eight nine, so. I don't know which of these contain four, seven, three, or six. This has a two. Now, if that had a nine, then it would, well, I don't know, it would have a four or a seven. Okay. What is, ah, three. Oh, no, two is above the nine. Right, I was going to say what's above the nine. It's two that's above the nine in these dominoes. What is... Oh, and that's an 8-9 pair. I get a digit in the puzzle. That's a 7. That's not a 7. That's not a 7. Wow, this puzzle is mental. Right, what I was going to say a moment ago is 2 is above the 9. What is above the 8? Not 4. 
So four can't be in those cells. So four is up here, which was something I was wondering about a moment ago because of the one, four, seven. Oh, I could have known four was up there once I got that as a seven. That's not a four because of Sudoku. Now this needs, it's got two from the set up the middle, seven. It needs a three or a six. And one of the, whatever it is will be above the eight. Okay, I can't do anything about that. So four and five are up here. Um, I mean, is it worth observing that this can't go four, two, nine because of the four, two problem? Not really. That can't be a seven, that's just Sudoku. God, this is weird. That can't be middly, we know that. Right, one, no, two. Eight and nine. All I know that is interesting is that there's a two nine pair on one side of this or the other. Oh, this can't be a three because it would either be next to three, which is impossible for Sudoku rules, or nine which is impossible according to the 1 to 3 ratio ban. So, if this is a 2-3 pair, that's a 3, that's 8, that's 2, that's 9. But it could be 2-6, that... Ooh, if that can be... if that was a 6, that has to be 9 because six can't be next to three here either. That's banned. I find this very difficult. Sorry, I'm not not seeing this easily at all. Um, oh, one is confined to these digits. No. Yeah, one is fine with eight. I'll tell you what's not fine. That can't be an eight. Eight is now in one of these two. What's not fine with eight is four. We know there's a four in one of those two, but there can't be a four in one of these because eight would be next to four, and that is a one to two ratio. So four is over there, four is over there. Now, five is, and it's not, it's one, four, seven that we have to apportion amongst these. So four is there, one is up here, that's not a one. This is now a one-eight pair, one is definitely there. Seven is in this group, because one of these needs to have one, one needs to have four, one needs to have seven. Seven must be in this pair of cells as well. And we've got the ones, fours and sevens, the two fives and eights parceled out. Still need to do it for three sixes, threes, sixes and nines in this row, but... I don't see how to do that at all. Um, nine is here. If I knew what that was, it would do it all. And there definitely is... Oh, well... No, there, there isn't definite roping yet. There's roping of portions. There's roping of the 1-8 set. But that doesn't prove full roping, I don't think. I don't understand how it does, if it does. Right, so I need to come up with something new now. This is a weird old puzzle, isn't it? Okay, that 1-8 pair was interesting. We've got 4-5 there, 2-7. Where's 6 going? Can it go here? Not... Yes, it could. Couldn't go next to 3, that's all. Do we know anything about 3s? No, not enough is the answer. How does this get broken up. Am I missing something totally obvious? I probably am. Two and nine would need a middly digit on top of them. Yeah, I haven't done enough thinking about high, low, middle, have I? So let's do some of that now. Yeah, that, oh, it's obvious here. That can't be a three because there's a two there and that's low. So that's a nine. This, this might be huge or it might not. 
Nine is there. Now nine has to be up here somewhere, and this is a one eight nine triple. Same as that, same as that. So we've got full roping now. But I still don't know how to apportion three and six. Oh, bother. This has to be middly because of high and low there. So that's four, five, or six. That's not a nine now. Now, we need... I don't know. We need one, eight, nine, two, four, five. This is three, six, or seven. So in uh, that's the trouble is that's one from each polarity, isn't it? Okay, if that's a three, then that's eight, two, six, five. Hang on, three would go with eight, two, nine, five. Ooh, that couldn't be six. That would have to be four, and that would be six. But alternatively, this is a two-six pair above eight-nine, and this is a three-four-five triple. And this would be two-six-seven. Oh, entropy here. Have I thought enough about that? Well, yeah, I have. One of those being a seven effectively does that job. Oh, I don't know. This is so strange. Oh, right. One and eight can't be above four. Neither of them. One has a one to four ratio and eight has a one to two ratio with four. So neither of those are four. Four in this row is there. This, I don't know. Ah, oh, that can't be eight. That's nine. Right. Now, eight... Uh, it was going to be 2 above 9, because 2 can't be above 8. Oh, don't tell me this doesn't sort out 3 and 6. It doesn't, does it? Oh, that's maddening. Um, but we need a... We don't need a low digit here. We need a middly one. So that's 5. Um... Come on, what have we got left? Three, four, and six to fill in. Yes, three cannot be next to six because of the rule. So three and six must be there, split up by chaperone four, and there we go. Now we can rope all of these things. That's not a six. In fact, this is a three, seven pair now, isn't it? I could have removed that nine a while ago. I didn't spot that. This is a five, six pair. Six... Five won't be able to be under one. So it'll go six, one, seven up one of these and three, eight, five down the other. Uh, this group is four, five, six. This group is three, two, seven. Eight can't be next to two. Three can't be next to six. Four can't, four can't be next to eight or one. Yeah, that's right. So this is a nine. Now, come on. Oh, one and eight, it's the same deal as over here. One and eight can't be next to four. Oh, this is so clever. Does that not solve this cell? That's so strange and suspicious. Oh, but it can't actually be that same group appearing here. Oh, okay, that's not suspicious, it's just odd. Right, we can't have sixes there. This can't be a three either, so this is all getting a bit constrained. That is now the high digit down here. We need a medium and a low. That can't be nine, I've just noticed. We need to get out of rows four, five, six now and do something brilliant somewhere else, which is going to be a challenge because I'm really not understanding this puzzle much at all, am I? Oh, come on. Am I, I'm, I see, I say that and I immediately start checking everything I've done already. Okay, this can't be 438 by Sudoku. It can't be 1 or 2 by the rule. But that leaves a variety of possibilities. Um, ah, I was going to say 1 and 8 can't be next to 4, but that's obvious. But it also, they can't be next to 2. 
That doesn't quite tell me where two goes in the row. It would be nice to narrow something down like that. 4529. This can't be three. I mean, it's just, it's not worth pencil marking these, but I haven't got anything else I know how to do at the moment. So, so I need to think again at this point. This is such a strange puzzle. Ooh, okay, I haven't got anywhere near forgetting and it mattering that there are no threes in the corner yet. But it's worth remembering. Now, one won't be next to five here. One will be next... Oh, six! Can't be next to two or three, can it? Six is in one of those cells, so this can't be a two-three pair. So they include seven, and that's a three. Um, well, that gets me one more digit in the puzzle. Hurrah. This can't be one or six, though. So, oh, may yes. Um, ooh, in modularity, no, um, modulo here. I can't have a seven there in the same row as a four. In fact, one of these is definitely a five because we need a digit from 258 in that group. So that's not a five. That's interesting. I didn't realize that sort of thing could happen. Um, have we got anything like that going down here? No. What about this? This can't be 438 or 2. No, that is no use. Um, Wow, what am I meant to do next, Jobo? I don't know. I don't know how I'm meant to see a way through this. This is weird, this puzzle. Ah, oh, come on, keep thinking, Mark. Three, seven, two, nine, four. Uh, this one can't be one or eight because of the four. That's just, it's just not, I keep doing it and it's just not worth pencil marking these digits. Maybe I need to focus on something like this 1-8 pair that can't have a 2 there. Now, how does that help? Oh, there's a 4. That's just Sudoku. The only given did the only full digit we've got outside rows four, five, six lets me do some Sudoku. Four is there. Now two can't be with that four. So two is up here. And now two in column four is down here. And can't be well, it can't be with six in those cells. That can't be a six, by the way, because of the Entropy rule here, that's from the same middly set. So six is up here somewhere. I hadn't seen that before, but thinking about sixes down here got me to do that. So that's not a six. How is this gonna two is the low digit down here, so that's not a one. Four is the middly digit here, so five needs to be in that group, and it's also in that pair. The overlap is there. That is a five. I am going to claim that I have now got out of rows four, five, six, but still lots of work to do. Five, six, seven, one. We've got two, four, three, and eight. Ah, eight can't be up here with the two, so eight is down here, but it can't be touching the four. So eight and four are in this group, but they've got to be separated because they're naughty together. They need a chaperone in the middle. I don't know what that is, but I do know what polarity it comes from. It's low and it's two or three and it can't be two because of the ratio with eight. Ah, so that's three. This is a two nine pair. Three, three. One of these is definitely three. Uh, that doesn't fix it. Come on, this is working. That is a 438 triple. So this is roping going north. So 
that's 3, that's 8. 8 can't be next to 2, 8 must be next to 9, and indeed 3 can't be next to 9, so that's all worked. This is a 176 triple, 1 can't be next to 2, so box 2 is finished. That's not 7, these are 259, 2 can't be next to 4, so it's in the middle there. I was going to say it's chaperoning 5 and 9, but 5 and 9 wouldn't be naughty together. I make no such accusation. This is now a 167 triple, and 1 can't be next to 3 or 4 by the anti-ratio rule. So that's a 1. 6 can't be next to 3. Oh, this is brilliant. 1 can't be next to 3 here, or 5. The anti-ratio rule goes all the way up to 1 to 5. So this is 6 or 7. It's a bit odd symmetry terms that those aren't done when everything up here is hope I haven't made a mistake. Right, this is 1, 2, 7 or 8 by Sudoku. Can't be 2 by the rule. 2, 6 would be illegal. 2, 3, 7, 9, 4. Ah, this is interesting. This is 1, 5, 6, 8 by Sudoku, but it can't be, it can't be 1, 6 or 8 next to the 2. So that is a bizarre naked single in this puzzle only. Now, we've got a far... Uh, that 5 doesn't go because we don't know where 5 is here. Um, right, but let's try these other digits. This is 1, 6 or 8 by Sudoku. The 7 doesn't contribute to fixing that. This one, 1, 5, 6 or 8, but it can't be 6 next to a 3. This one, again, weirdly. No, 1, 6 or 8 this time. And I haven't got any means. Let's check these out just in case. These are a bit more profitable than the cells I was checking before for Sudoku. Although, ah, this is next to a 1. So it's got to be big. 6, 7, 8, or 9. So that's 6 or 7. And I've totally forgotten about entropy and modul modulo for modularity for a long while. So let's try and remember that now. Um... The, none of these can be three. We've pencil marked those. Oh, it's it's very neat, actually. That can't be three by Sudoku. These can't be three by the rule, because they'd be next to one or six. So three is the low digit up here, and there's no one up there. One of those is a three. One in this column is a low digit in this group, and is in one of those cells. Now... Uh, I don't know what to do with the rest. Um, I thought I was on a roll there, and it, it died away instantly. So, keep thinking about at least entropy. But I, I need actual solid digits. So, that six can't be down here. So, six has to be in one of those. Um, ow. But, okay, modularity. D d no, I mean, yeah, modularity. Is that any use? Along here, we, we... Six, five, and four are from each set. We can't have one and... I don't know what to do with that. I need to get another digit somewhere. I didn't pencil mark this one. One oh, it can't be one next to a five, so that's two, seven, or eight. Oh well, that is interesting because seven is no two is the low digit in this group, so one must appear in one of those two. One is very constrained, but here it seems fine. What's going to be next to it on its left? Well, there is one other high digit left over from these. That's a shame. Right. Two. Which of these can't be two? Don't know. Seven or eight. So six is definitely up here. I was about to say something absolutely mad, like I wish there was a one to six ratio ban in this puzzle as well, but that would really be an impossible grid to fill. Now, okay, let's think about 
modulo with this 5. So we need something... Oh, that can't be an 8. I just... Oh, of course. <coughs> yes. One of these sets has a 5. One of them has an 8 and one of them has a 2. Well, the 8's got to be on the low side because of this group. So the 2 is on this side. And now we've got 2 in that set and in that set. And they overlap here. Where I've just put a mistaken 3 in. Right. <coughs> so that can't be 2. Let me just take some handy water. Now, we can replicate these across. There's a 2 somewhere here. There's an 8 somewhere here, not next to the 2. This can't be a 2 because it's next to a 6. Uh, four, six, 1, 4, 6 and 8 are all banned from this by Sudoku, so that's not a useful revelation. And I don't know which of these is 5 or 9. That's irritating me now. If it's obvious, bother. Now, we've got a f 2 and a 5. That is 7 or 8. That hasn't changed anything up here. 5, 2, 3, 7. So, 7 is there. Ah, maybe I can ban 4 out of here. If 4 was in this group, it would have to be separate from 8. So we'd put 8 there and 4 there. And that doesn't work for this reason. If you did that, 2 would have to go here, avoiding the 4. And then 1, which has been squeezed down here, would be next to 2. So 4 is not over here. 4 is up in these cells and in these, where it can't be with... It doesn't want to be with 1. It wants to be with something from 3, 6 or 9. And it has no restrict... Well, 4 with 6 or 9. We've, we've got a 3 there. So over here, we definitely have a 1 in this group. And we definitely have a 1 in this pair. And they overlap in this cell. That is a 1. 5, 2, 7, 3, 1. Now, this has to be... I'm thinking first about the ratio rule. So that's 6, 8 or 9. That's actually not all that helpful. What about this? Right, one of these needs to be a 6. I learned that earlier and have never used it. That wherever 1 appears in a row 8, 5 or 2, it must be touching a 6 vertically because it needs to touch a middly digit and a high digit. The only middly one it's allowed to touch out of the anti-ratio rule is 6. So that is a 6. Now this is a 4-6 pair. This is now an 8-9 pair. This puzzle's fascinating. I thought, with absolute certainty, this would either be very straightforward or unbelievably difficult. And it's actually steering a rather brilliant middle course, I think. Now, I mean, I've said that, and I could still grind to a desperate halt, I suppose, but I'm hoping that's not going to happen, obviously. 4, 6, 5, 2. 8 and 1 are in this group. 1 is in one of those cells. And it mustn't be next to 4, which is interesting. 6, 1, 8, 9, 2. F I don't know. Uh, use all the, all the rules. So, 6... Is middly one is low we need a high digit can't be eight or nine it's a seven that makes this eight use all the rules all the time don't forget no threes in the corner um two four five six eight we need a one down here we need a seven up here And three or nine. Come on. Use all the rules. Come on. Six. And then here we need a two or a five. From two, five, eight, it has to be a five in these cells, doesn't it? In this group, they need a two, five, eight modulo digit. And it can't be two and it can't be eight. Yes. That's a four, five pair. Right. That's going to disambiguate this nine, five in box eight. This is now a 2-3 pair. We're not allowed to put 3 in the corner by the anti-party rule. It sounds like a political party suddenly. Um, 
Now, 2 can't be next to 8. 8 can't be next to 4. That's brilliant. And that fixes an awful lot of stuff. Now it is suddenly becoming fairly clear. That's a 3-7. This is a 1-9 pair. No threat of a party there. I mean, it would be party gate, I suppose, if we accidentally ended up with 3 in the corner. 1-7-6. These don't have a 7. So we know how they go. 3-5-8. This is a 2-4-9 set. 8 can't be next to 2 or 4. 2 can't be next to 1. And look at that. The last six columns all done. Now, th these don't have an 8 in. And that can't be a 6. So those are, that triple's done. Now, we're gonna, I'm just going to put in the pairs. And I think... Yeah, look at this pattern. Oh, hang on. Right, I think I just wrote those in wrong. No, I didn't. Oh no, what's gone wrong now? Something's gone wrong here. This can't be a 9. That, I said, has to be a 9. Oh, no. I think something's gone wrong. I don't believe it. Let's start with that not being 8. Let's just do the Sudoku. Simple stuff. The 8 can't be next to 4. That has to be right. This is a 9 which makes that 2 and 4. 2 can't be next to 1. But it's all going to go wrong in a moment, isn't it? It is. That's not going to have any possibilities. 7 here. 7 here, 6 there, 1 there. This actually has to be a 1 by Sudoku now. Maybe it hasn't gone wrong. Maybe I just did something. Okay. This is a relief. Two or three, four or five, nine or eight. Has something gone wrong here? I don't know. I might check everything at the end. Right. Now, oh, this is weird. Look, there's a one, eight, nine deadly pattern. And there's a four, five, six deadly pattern. And there's a two, three, seven deadly pattern. And I think this is... This is what the party rule is all about. We're going to have to fix it because three can't go in there. So two there, three there, two, seven, three, seven. Now, two mustn't be next to six. So that does the four, five, six triple. And what else? Four mustn't be next to eight, say. So now, I think if we put a 9 there, we're done. But I'm going to check all the ratios because I am psychotically um, nervous about this. 1's there. Are they always surrounded by 6, 7, 8, and 9, which they're allowed to be? Yes. Okay, they're obeying the rules. 2's have to be surrounded by 3, 5, 7, and 9 only. Okay, and those are the hardest digits, and they're being obedient. So 3s have to be surrounded not by 1, 6, or 9. I mean, this is an incredible construction. 4s mustn't be surrounded. They're quite tricky. 1, 2, 8, or maybe that's all. think we're all right. Fives we know don't touch ones because we've checked it. Sixes mustn't touch. I suppose we've checked everything going up, so we've checked everything. Now, what about the entropy <laughs> and the modulo? So I can check. Oh, well, they're all, they're all roped, aren't they? Is this fully roped everywhere? Four, five, six is a perfectly legal set. 
237 is a legal set. And those rope everywhere, don't they? 456, 237, and 189. They're okay. Well, that's simple to check. Going down, I think we have maybe we have full roping as well. 258 is obviously fine. 349 is a good set, and 167. And they apply everywhere in all the downs. 167. Oh, no, they don't. Here we get 249 instead of 349. Did observe that earlier. So over this side, we're roping slightly different digits. And in fact, in, in the middle, although we're roping 167 everywhere, here it's 258, here it's 259, here it's 249. Isn't that weird? But they all work. And this is a nine and we're finished. What a puzzle. That is absolutely incredible. I'm very, very pleased that Jobo sent that to us because that's an extraordinary construction. Utterly weird, totally beguiling, and thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you for watching. I love bringing that to you. I didn't do it brilliantly, but I hope I've at least evoked some measure of awe at its construction, which I think it merits. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.